Okay, so uh, let me just finish a couple of um, details about uh, the, um, the behavior of the node, node properties. We saw here some, some hints about uh, how to create or modify the, the node tree. Uh, but uh, maybe something which is more that we will use more frequently is just to modify some properties of a node. Okay, so for example, uh, it's very easy to uh, modify the class of a node. So imagine that you are you are modifying um, maybe in your interaction you, are, you want to show or hide or make it bigger or change the color of an element. Maybe you are also using Bootstrap, uh, so you can uh, add or remove classes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, every element has a property is called the class name. Uh, it's not called class uh, like in the HTML because a class is a reserved word in, in JavaScript. So they were, you need to, uh, no, they, they change actually the, the representation. So it's called class name um, that contains as a string uh, the, the list of classes of an element. But uh, we maybe it's also you know more convenient to use a class list, which is the list of the classes associated to a, to, to a specific element. So you can add or remove or toggle a class uh, for for every element uh, very quickly just by okay by saying that. And so we can decide maybe if you are using Bootstrap to make it appear or disappear by toggling the visibility or by toggling the size or the color or whatever you want. Okay, so that would be easier. Or if you go and fiddle the specific style of elements, um, because all the styles, all the CSS properties uh, in the box model, in the font, in the background, all the properties, 200 and more properties in CSS are available as properties of, sorry, of, a, of style, of, an, of a sub property which is called style. So, for example, we have the element dot style will open the list of all the styles of an element dot display will change the display property for none in line block or whatever or the color and so on so you can um, you can modify specifically the css style of a single element or maybe it's much better to add or remove a class that will then apply a set of, the, of styles we don't need to see the css or to manipulate the css we are only changing the, the classes and then the browser will know what to do when the class changes uh, according to the CSS. Okay, again, we are just talking to the HTML and the CSS will be applied on top of it automatically by the browser and in real time, whenever we change something. Okay, but the, the, the real fun starts uh, when we start uh, manipulating the events in the, in, in the page. Um, events are simple JavaScript objects that are delivered whenever something happens to be to be dealt with. Um, and the events are always generated by uh, an element. Okay, so when I click on some element, uh, that element, that button, that title, that text will generate an event. Okay. Uh, strange enough, uh, the um, the, uh, the element that generates the event is called the target. Okay, logically, it could be the source of the event. Okay, where the event started, but in JavaScript, it's called target. So the target of an event is actually the element that sources, that created, that triggered that event. And events may be of different types, of course. Uh, we may uh, define our own event handler using this uh, uh, add event listener method that I mentioned before um where we just have to specify which uh, for, uh, which is the event that we want to catch and uh, you guessed it a callback to be executed uh, a function to be executed when the event is triggered so for example we want to uh, okay the, the event the, the the event handler receives uh, a one parameter one parameter one argument, which is the an event object, and basically this event object has two main properties: event dot target and event dot type. Event dot target is the reference to the node that creates the event, and event dot type is the type, the specific type of event. So mouse click or mouse over or whatever. There's a long list of events here 
uh, all these DOM events uh, are listed uh, of the, you, there's a column, you cannot read it, but this column is called the type. So these are all, all the types of, um, of, um, of events that can be generated. So they're really, there's really an infinite or nearly infinite number of, uh, of events that you can catch and can modify. Hmm? Um, the most important maybe are the click event. When the user clicks on something, uh, the focus or blur. So when an element gets or, or loses the focus when a form element and so on. Um, so let's maybe try to modify our, our page. What is that? Did I close it? Not here. Um, okay. And uh, we want to do something when the user clicks on the on this main section, for example. Okay. So we already have it. So if I click on this, uh, then maybe I will change it, the color or something else. Very stupid. Hmm? Um, since I'm, I loaded Bootstrap, so changing the color is as easy as uh, setting a class, for example. Hmm? Uh, can you, Marta is asking, can you use a target, a class of elements? Uh, uh, no, you can uh, register even tender on a single element. So if you want many elements to behave in the same way, you have to register the event is the same event listener onto all each of them, all of them individually, or onto the if they are in the same if they are children of the same element, you can register the event tender at the container. So in the father, we see how the events are, are propagated. Let's start with with a simple case. Hmm? Um, well, for example, I want to add an event listener uh, to an element, which is maybe the, the main. So for example, the, this one. So I add the event listener to this element. I find an element. Okay, and I want to add an event listener to that element. I specify which type of event I want to listen for, for example, the click, and I specify the uh, action to do. So given the event, give me, let's say first console.log, and itself. So let's just check if it's working. Okay. So I take an uh, one element in, and they call the add even listener to that element. One, uh, I select one of the event types that may be generated by that event. Click and may be generated by all of them, by the way, and the callback to execute. So let's see what happens. Going to the console, I click here. You see that every time I click, a new line happens, uh, appears in the console, and it describes uh, the this event in in, par in particular is of type uh, uh, mouse event, with uh, again a ton of properties. One is the uh, type click. You see it there. The other is the target element. Oh, sorry. That points uh, to the to the element that we that generate where we click basically, and then there is a lot of other properties. Some are specific to the mouse event, and some are general to so this event uh, object is quite rich again. Hmm? Uh, but the, the important thing is that uh, we are uh, we are executing a sick uh, our code whenever it's clicking on some other revenue. We we'll do some action. And in this code, I can do whatever I want, basically. Okay. So, uh, I, by the way, in the if I go into the sources, uh, I can you know, set a breakpoint here to debug it. So when I click, the browser will stop and give me the opportunity of debugging this event handler, and then I go and so on. Hmm? Um, okay. So I want to do something more creative, like, I uh, don't know, changing the color of the other main title, the, the main title of the page. So I, I will get the element 
with selector of uh, uh, I want to get um, the h1 which is inside the header header yeah header sorry I cannot get it right and uh, I maybe can uh, toggle the class uh, oh, sorry class uh, list uh, toggle uh, I can toggle the uh, for example bg primary if I remember correctly I'm changing the background of the element and so in this case uh, sorry I had the breakpoint <laughs> every time I click here I'm changing a class uh, of another element and in this case i'm toggling so adding or removing depending on whether it's already there or not and it will give me this uh, uh, stupid effect basically but this is the uh, the lowest <laughs> the lowest level from this we can do whatever we want whatever we want okay we can decide when to run some code and the when is uh, which is the event that i'm going to intercept and what to do in that moment and what to do maybe anything i'm not limited to uh, for example the click the click was generated by the main uh, but the click the, the code doesn't isn't limited to act only on this main section it may act on any part of the page so i can every time i click i could increase the number here we, we, you could do whatever you want basically it's just one callback that has the same control over the dom as the other main code the only rule is try to be fast not try not to do some complex computations in there uh, because uh, you are delaying all the other event lenders in your code so for example uh, we had this uh, uh, query selector which is being called every time um, every time the event uh, is triggered so maybe we could uh, compute it uh, uh, elsewhere uh, so for example taking the uh, let uh, uh, page header and take it here and uh, use it here and uh, we are using a closure of course because right now the the event listener here is using a variable which is defined outside so it's closure but we already know them nothing Strange. In if uh, if the uh, this query selector doesn't change, so if nobody changes that part of the page, uh, we can reuse this variable and uh, it will be faster to run because it doesn't need to search the DOM every time. Okay. Um, if you want to to add the same listener to other uh, elements, uh, of course you have to create a list of the elements and loop uh, to each uh, of them and add the same function. Uh, maybe if the same function is reused many times, uh, instead of writing that in line, you can maybe just uh, uh, create it outside, define it outside, and then use the reference to the function here. If you want to be, uh, for example, I, I, I could define a function, uh, change background, blue, like, uh, uh, like this event and I can use this code and here I could just let me maybe make a copy and make a comment so that we still have it you could just have the name of the function here and it's the same so if you want uh, just to uh, to finish the answer to Martha, if you want to add the same event tender to a, a group of elements, maybe it's better to define a function with one of the many syntaxes for defining functions and then add the name of the function here. And of course it will work in the same way. Mm -hmm. Just uh, beware, don't call the function. Okay, don't put the parentheses here. This is a function, but we just need to pass the reference to that function because the function will be called asynchronously no? when, when, the, when the event is triggered. And this is the basic mechanism, basically, that... Uh, oh, sorry.
this is the basic mechanism uh, that applies to everything. Uh, there's a bit more complexity of handling these events because uh, uh, the events are really generated by one element, but these ob uh, event objects propagate up and down through the tree. Um, when, when an event happens, uh, maybe a mouse click on some, maybe imagine you have a, a mouse click here on this element, on this table data. So we have a table where the user clicks some, somewhere inside the table. Uh, they, an event is generated, an event object is generated with all those attributes that we've seen and uh, will be passed to all the nodes from the root of the document down to the specific node. In the first phase, is a capture phase, uh, usually we don't do anything, it's just uh, passed down. Uh, no, even, no event renders are filed, so nothing happens. Um, we just reaches the node. Then we have the so-called target phase, where we are triggering the event lenders on the target node. So that is why it's called target instead of source. We found the node, which is the responsible for the event, and then we call the event lenders on this node if we have some event handlers defined. And then we have an op uh, the event after we execute the event lenders here, we, the event goes back to the father and the father and the father and so on with a phase which is called bubbling. And all the event tenders for the same type of event, for example, the click of the father will be called and of the father of the father will be called and the father of the father of the father will be called. So we are calling all the event tenders for the same type of event that are registered up to the chain uh, of, the, of the DOM tree. Uh, this is a, is a method that if we want to define um, a behavior that goes for all uh, the, the same for all the cells in a row of the table, for example, we can define the event lender at the row level or at the table level. And instead of defining that at the, at the, at the cell level. Huh? So in this way, we can define uh, the event lender at a common ancestor to all the nodes where the event will need to be propagated. In any case, the event object still has the, the real target known. So we can know exactly which is the cell that generated. But instead of registering the event lender in this cell, in that cell, and so on, or in that cell, in that cell, we register only once here at the table level or at the T-body level. It will be called, so only one event lender will be called with a target reference to the specific cell that generates uh, where the click happened. Um, so this is a, a, a way of uh, not having just one handler for a group of elements, uh, but sometimes you don't want that. And so when usually it's good practice, when you handle an event, uh, in the last line of your event handler, call this uh, method uh, stop propagation for the event. Stop propagation means, okay, I'm done with that. I did everything that I need, uh, had to be done. And so stop it. So we will not, don't call the event lenders in the levels above me, okay? So you have, you have the control. If you want to have an event lender on a node, okay, do that and stop propagation so that the, the father and the ancestors don't, will never see that event, okay? If you want just to have an ancestor deal with that, you leave out, you don't specify the event lender uh, at the low level or you specify it and you don't stop the propagation and then you will know that, uh, um, that it will be had dealt before. I would say that in 99% of the cases, when we handle an event, I we want to stop the propagation, okay? Because we, we do everything that needs to be done, mm -hmm. but uh, the mechanism is there for you to control. Um, additionally, many events also have a default behavior. So the click on, uh, for example, on a section here doesn't have any default behavior. By default, the browser does nothing when I click here or when I click there. So I'm defining an event tender for an event that would otherwise have been lost, okay? But there are some actions where the, the browser will do something. For example, if I click on a link, it will go to the new page. If I click on a submit button for a form, the form will be submitted and so on. So there are some <clears throat> events where the browser already knows what to do. If I want the browser 
uh, not to do its default action, I must call this uh, method prevent default. Otherwise, uh, the browser will execute my event tender and then execute its own predefined method. So there are two separate concepts. One is uh, the bubbling that can be stopped with stop propagation that prevents my own custom event tenders from being called. And the second is the prevent default that prevents the browser for executing the default action for that action. This only makes sense when the browser has a default action. Basically, we have links and forms. Usually the other default actions are quite welcome. Uh, maybe uh, if you click on a text area, the cursor goes inside and this is a, gets the focus. And this is the default action for the browser. You don't want to prevent that. Okay, maybe you want to do something when the, the element gets the focus, but you don't want to prevent it from, from, the, from getting the focus, unless maybe you are trying to, um, maybe there are some websites where you there, that uh, disable the right click uh, so that you, can, you cannot copy and paste. Uh, and so in this case, uh, they are taking over the default action for the browser. And so you cannot do the right click, you cannot select the text uh, and so on, because the same event is being in um, term, um, redefined by the uh, by the JavaScript, and you, the, the default action for the browser is being prevented. Uh, uh, of course, needless, needless to say, it's not a good practice to hijack the browser and uh, uh, modify the behavior of the default uh, actions or just prevent you from using the default action. Okay, so I don't like very much the website where I cannot do text selection, cut and paste. Uh, and save an image or whatever, okay? Um, but this, this is the mechanism for doing that. Um, okay. Uh, these are the, um, there are some specific uh, events uh, that are used for uh, starting uh, all of this. So right now we did something strange. We have some, synchronous code here okay that uh, uh, by the way sets some event uh, event listeners and so on but something is executed after the loading of the page mm -hmm. uh, is not the right or the cleanest way to do that usually uh, all the javascript files uh, uh, should only uh, wait for the right moment to execute some code mm -hmm. uh, right now we we loaded our script uh, with the different attributes. So we are pretty sure that the document is loaded when our script uh, is executed, okay? But uh, in, in general, we run the risk that this query selector maybe is uh, it's incomplete because uh, the, um, the DOM has not been loaded completely yet. Hmm? Or maybe there's some other JavaScript that will complete some, some information that's still uh, isn't, isn't executed and so on. So usually what we want to do is to link the execution of our code to uh, a, a, a um, specific event that will tell us that the page is correctly loaded. Okay, uh, so normally we have different type of events. Uh, so I don't have the, the picture. Um, we, we don't have the, uh, we have different type of events. Uh, that will tell us the progress uh, uh, that the browsing for the browser to, to load the page. So whenever the con the DOM is ready, the document fires an event called the DOM content loaded. So the DOM tree is ready. At this point, we are sure that we can use the document object and all the information will be there. But uh, external resources are not loaded. So if we rely on some images or some styles, uh, they may not be ready yet. Uh, when the browser still loads the elements, uh, when it finishes loading the elements, uh, it will generate a load event. So the browser has finished loading all the resources linked to the page. So it depends on the moment uh, when you want uh, to, um, to execute your code, um, you can define, uh, you can define an event and put your code into an event lander for either of these uh, two uh, elements. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, normally we would like to link to the to the DOM content loaded. 
So actually, our code would be like this. Um, let me comment all of this. That was just, or, or maybe let, let's, let, let's create a new file. Okay, so let's create it from scratch. Um, example two, example two. JS and modify the index to call example two. So what we want to do here in example two is to um, define an event handler for the DOM content loaded where we customize the page. So the page is empty, just HTML. We want to add some new features to this page. So first of all, we ask the, the DOM to inform us when the page is ready. So add even listener for the event DOM uh, content loaded, content loaded with the right capitals. And then we define an event tender for that. So this would be the only synchronous instruction into our JavaScript code. We register an event tender. This event tender will fire when the DOM is, uh, is ready. So at this point, we can uh, get uh, maybe the, um, the main title, the page title, uh, as a document query selector or uh, um, header h1 we can have uh, the same for the article title or the main h1 and then we can register an event tender on the article title uh, these are all the references to dom nodes so we have all the properties and all the methods for dom nodes article title dot uh, uh, add event listener when i click on this element then i have an event that we can handle and handling this event means uh, for example changing the style of the other page title like we did before so page title uh, dot uh, uh, class uh, hist dot toggle background uh, uh, primary, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as before. The only difference is that we are registering an event listener in the body of an of another event listener that we has been fired at the end of the loading of the page. So this is normal code in JavaScript. You, have, you also have uh, you know, the last lines of closing braces uh, because you have nesting of, uh, of callbacks. And all the code, all the real code. So you can uh, usually, you may have uh, different function definitions uh, at the beginning uh, of the file that will just define your function. And then basically one uh, one instruction that will uh, fire the code, the initialization code. No? And in this code, you may also define constant variables, functions, and register other even listeners. And then they will take over. Then your program is finished. All the work will be done by the event listener that you've set up in the right spots, uh, in the right um, parts of the page. Um, it is toggle. Oh yeah, two G and one O. Okay, so let's try it. It should behave as before. Uh, so we run this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it works. Of course, in the same way. Nothing changed. Uh, and in this case, we are also more, uh, you know, uh, protected against the browsers that maybe don't implement the differ attribute in correctly. Uh, 
because we are anyway uh, waiting for the right event uh, for the right moment to execute our code hmm? so this usually is the skeleton where where we're working hmm? um okay yes defer should do the same thing more or less hmm? but uh, you know the support of the browsers uh, always always a, a challenge okay so is in a deferred you should always happen in a, uh you, sh you should not be really uh needed to to add this uh, but this is common practice just to be explicit about when to call it uh use strict uh can be sometimes it's implicit, but when you load as a met as a module, in this case it should be added. But I don't know if it's, if it's honored at the beginning of every file. Um, I'm not so sure because normally we are using modules, and in that case, it's use script is uh, is implicit. We could use it, but uh, probably it would be. I'm not so sure it would be honored. Because we are not at the beginning of the of the real file that the browser sees. Um, okay. So uh, of course most of the interaction will happen not with the clicking titles uh, but with forms. Uh, okay. Um, and so most of the work will be done in form controls. Mm -hmm. Forms are the part of the HTML code that allows us to create, uh, you know, the forms contains all contained on all buttons, uh, text areas, uh, uh, and so on. Hmm? Uh, from the HTML point of view, declaring a form is quite easy. So let's just have a look at what the HTML looks like, uh, and so that we can uh, make these forms more intelligent or whatever. So a form is um, opened by a form tag. And the form tag basically defines uh, the um, action that should be carried on when the, when the form is submitted. This, this action, in most of the cases, will be submitting the data to the server to do some processing. Okay. In our case, uh, we don't, uh, uh, in many cases, we don't want the form to be submitted because uh, uh, we are handling our data in the client side. Okay, so we don't know, want the normal submission of the form because they will be they will unload the whole page and unload all, all our JavaScript, and we don't want that. So we will want to prevent that. We the form we will handle them, them, we will handle them ourselves instead of letting the browsers handle them. Hmm? Uh, but inside this form container, the form may also have an ID. Uh, we may have uh, normal HTML content, so form is just a sort of a invisible container and special controls uh, controls are the individual widgets uh, okay then maybe uh, inputs uh, so we have the input tag uh, that are an attribute uh, uh, of type that we use to shape the type of input so uh, text uh, input is just an input of type text uh, every input element must have, every form element must have a name attribute because we have many, many input cells, each of them has a different name. Okay, so remember the form has an ID, may have an ID, and usual if you have, and the uh, every input element has a name. And we use the name to match the value. So every a form as a so every form element has a name and a value. The value is what the user typed in, and the name, of course, is the identifier for the for the element. We use the attribute name instead of the attribute ID in this case, because JavaScript picks up this for creating properties. And uh, the value attribute, uh, usually we don't set it because it's uh, we'll we'll get uh, okay the what whatever the user writes into that. So uh, in JavaScript we can read it. And for accessing the elements of a form, uh, there's a shortcut uh, because uh, we can in the document uh, you have an array called forms. Of course we could we could use a, a query selector. But it's also easier to use the forms array with the form ID that will give me 
uh, immediately the reference to the form and the form is automatically populated uh, with an elements array of all the elements ids uh, or with the element names by the way so it's a, it's a fast way of, of finding and picking uh, the individual elements and there are many type of input, input controls so we may have buttons we may have uh, check boxes uh, uh selection selecting the color date selector uh date time it works only partially uh it depends on the browser uh the email so uh, it is a text selector where the syntax uh, should be the, uh, the one of an, you know, of an email uh, a number a password that will show the asterisk instead of uh, uh, instead of what you are typing and so on all of this uh, is just the input element with uh, different uh, uh, types type equal to type equal to and we'll change it hmm? so uh, and uh, okay again continues with radio buttons uh, sliders uh, uh, and uh, okay some default buttons like the, the submission button that we normally don't use hmm? so we have a lot of uh, uh, elements that are just input uh, customized in different ways and the browser will render it in a different way uh, there are some attributes uh, that are used in the input element uh, like for example if this read only is required uh, if it's uh, maybe disabled uh, in some in some condition you cannot enter data and so on of course these attributes are all all of them are available in the html you could set a value in the html and in the dom so you can set a value in your javascript um, okay there's some some details if you want to uh, to specify the the some constraints over the data that have been input the input element starts as a very dumb element by accessing any text and then in the current version of the browsers it's become more intelligent and you can also do some sort of validation before um, okay the other four controls are the text area when you have a multi-line text box uh, or the selector the menu that is used with, uh, with a, a strange totally different syntax we have a select a tag with a set of options uh, as different children okay uh, the selector as a name and the option as a value but we see some examples okay and then we have the button which is a which may transform into a button any type of HTML uh, content. Hmm? Uh, there are different types of buttons, but usually the most common one for us uh, in uh, in the front end development is just a normal button that doesn't have any predefined behavior. Hmm? Usually we want to pre in this case prevent and uh, reimplement the predefined behavior. Hmm? And so you can add anything inside the button class and will be turned into a button whether a text or some image. Uh, okay, so maybe let's uh, try to add something to our HTML, like uh, you know some sort of a, of a login form or whatever. So we can have uh, our form uh, element with an ID, user info, for example. We are asking for some user information and uh, uh, we can add uh, some uh, formatting uh, i don't know maybe we may make a list uh, and we have the first item or as a um, name as an input with the name type text and name Sorry, username. And we may have another birth date. Input type equal to date, for example. And uh, we may have uh, be the sex. So we have three radio button. Type uh, radio button with the name 
use a sex set. Value M example. Sorry. And they show an M. And I add another with F. Maybe another one with uh, asterisk. Don't I, hmm? I don't know. For example, okay. So I try to put a mix of elements, which is very ugly to, to see. Uh, you should have a look in the bootstrap in the form section. There's a lot of text that in bootstrap to make a form look nicer. But for, for the moment, I only wanted to see the, the, the main parts. So I can type a name. I can select a date. I can select one of the three uh, checkboxes. OK, so the layout is really ugly but uh, uh, just to make it work okay so what we can do here is to uh, again get some javascript event handlers for anything so when uh, the, you enter into a form there is an event which is called focus you get the for the focus here get the focus here and so you can do something uh, when something is changed or there's, a, there's an, a change event for the for the input element so these input elements are very strong <laughs> generators of events whenever you do something with this uh, uh, you, you can um, you can use those and uh, um, additionally maybe we have another button okay the button they, they called uh, uh, that they may call save or Button. I will give an ID to this button. Okay. Okay. So I have a button called Save. This button usually does nothing and tries just to to reload the page because it's it's inside the form, but we want to prevent them. Okay. So we what we are trying to do is to uh, create an event tender for this button that will check uh, the data and then probably will uh, save the data or send it somewhere and the mechanism is the same in our javascript sorry in our javascript we need just to uh, get some events from the input element so uh, we have a change event uh, we have a focus blur or we have the submit event okay and uh, you can add uh, event handlers uh, to the individual inputs or to the form as a whole the form usually as a submit event so usually what we do usually is taking the select the the, the, the form and uh, get the submit event for the form itself do something and uh, but prevent the defaults because we don't want the form to be submitted really to a server because we are handling our own data okay so for example in this case in our javascript again we we can register we can find the form, user form. I find it for the document. Dot. I gave an ID to that, which was called user info. Get element by ID user info. Right, user info. Yes. And so it can select. Uh, it can register an event lender on the user form. 
add event listener on the submit event. Yes, and I, I decide what to do. And first of all, the first thing usually is to pre let's forget to call the prevent default because we don't want clicking on submit to go to a different page. No, no, I in the example two is right. Um, okay. And so what should I do? Maybe just, uh, I would just, for example, I just get uh, the, the name of the user. How can I get the name of the user? I can get the user form dot, uh, um, see here from the slides, you have all the, sorry, elements of the form or you can uh, usually use the name so let's uh, so let's uh, have a breakpoint console i want to show it in the in the ending spectral so let's run it Okay, open the inspector and see, make a breakpoint here. And if I will write my name, I choose a date and I save. Okay, so right now the event tender, even listener for the submit event has been fired. I'm here. Okay, and the interesting part is the user form variable. That I should see here. User form. No, it's not in a global. User form. Why can't I select it? Because I'm this listener and it's not being closed. Uh, okay, sorry. Let's. Uh, get element by D. Is there info? <sighs> Sorry, I I wanted to show you the form element. Maybe it's faster if I go here. Okay, Sardi. Okay, the, uh, the form element has a set of attributes and uh, uh, some of them are the input elements and you should have also some elements called elements, you see, that will give you the list of the different inputs, element zero, one, two are the different, uh, you see the name, sorry, go back. The elements, the, the array that is called elements, zero give the name, one give the input, and so on. But I also have some uh, attributes that are called, like, for example, I have the, 
username attribute which has been okay should be injected somewhere but i don't see it okay sorry i uh, i got a bit lost um what we can do here uh, is to get for example the, the the name of the user so for example let username i can get it from for example the uh, element uh, which is called the user user form elements that can be uh, indexed by the id username and this will be a string so this would be the node the input node and for this we could get the value the value is an attribute that contains whatever the user is typing in that moment okay and so probably the username if we we can show it in the console or maybe we can validate it. You can see whether it's correct or not or something like that. So let me try again. Remove this break point. Mm, oh, there's some error. So let's call this username, user form dot elements ah. still undefined so okay because now is the elements uh, i was an id not a name sorry um okay i need to to fix it because it needs uh, this should be the ID of the element and not the name. Sorry, I got a bit confused, uh, but I will fix the example later on. Okay, the idea is that uh, um, we have we may control uh, when the user does some action, like clicking on a button, for example, for submitting the form, or maybe also when the user changes this because we have the on change element. Uh, or then you can change uh, attributes and so on. And we can do whatever we want by extracting values and so on and modifying them also. Uh, especially one last uh, point uh, is uh, you, you were saying uh, it's, it's ugly with, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the question. If it's ugly, does it affect uh, the exam? Well, if it's so ugly like this example, yes. But usually by using Bootstrap, uh, uh, you see that uh, it, um, it will give you nice forms uh, at a low cost. You just have to add the, to add the specific classes. Okay. Um, there is some. We have some examples here, uh, where, for example, you see the input field. Okay, has been selected so that this, this code is validated. Uh, I will correct mine later. Uh, by selecting the input, in this case, uh, with the, with the, by, by checking for the attribute, but in the many cases you can check by, by ID or by name. And you see that there's a field value inside the input element. So it's just a matter of uh, in, the, in the event listener, extracting the value attribute for the input text and then deciding what to do. Uh, in this case, maybe you have some, some field that should be mandatory. And so if the user tries to submit and the field is not filled, is not full, uh, then you can write an error message somewhere. And write an error message means uh, inserting some text or showing some text that maybe it was already there, but it was hidden in the right place. Or maybe changing, you know, the color of the text, making it red so that the user sees that something is wrong. Okay, so uh, it's up to now to do all the validation <clears throat> and all the saving the data when the validation uh, is okay, is correct. Um, we also have a library, I will show just uh, quickly the, the, the idea that uh, does the automatic validation in HTML5. 
okay so most of the cases we need to do our own custom validation on the submit event by checking whether the the username is present the password is present and this at least five characters long or eight characters long and the date is in the past and not in the future and so on a lot of checks that we need to do and we do them in the event lender for the submission of the form or if you want to be pre preemptive we can also validate the data as the user changes them so i insert something when i move to the next field i already validate the first one in that case you just have to <clears throat> Uh, redefine the on change event handler for the individual uh, cell but my, most of this work can also be done automatically by the browser because in html5 we have some form validation attributes again these are all uh, attributes um, <clears throat> that uh, in a way know how what kind of value should be inside some element so for example if we use type equal to email type equal to number and to a particular number also accept a minimum and a maximum value. So we have these additional attributes that are in the modern HTML that describe what kind of value. And, um, okay, for example, one, you can mark one field as required. If the value is not present, the format cannot be submitted. So in our case, uh, for example, the name could be required. It's just as simple as uh, adding an attribute here, required. And this uh, automatically enables the uh, validation of the form by the browser itself. So in this case, I just added this attribute and if I click on save, the browser itself will give me an error message. So most of the control that we should normally do in JavaScript can be already asked to the browser. Of course, if the browser is modern enough to, to implement that. Uh, we can also modify the appearance of the form because uh, we have a valid and invalid pseudo classes. And so if we say that invalid becomes red, maybe, and valid becomes green, uh, we can, on the same uh, input element, then we can have an element that uh, automatically change its appearance, uh, whether according to whether it's, it's content is valid or not, according to these rules, of course, that we said. This for the automatic behavior of the of the um, of the browser okay so in this case uh, we are changing the color of the of the text box uh, depending on whether it's invalid or valid and it will be automatically in real time uh, computed by the browser and if we want to do something more <clears throat> in javascript of course we could work with even listeners like we did before but uh, there's a specific api where our JavaScript can query the browser about the validation status of the elements uh, using the rules that, that we specified in the HTML. So for example, we have this uh, uh, check validity method uh, that will check the validity of all the elements uh, in a form or uh, this validity object that includes uh, for all the, uh, all the possible objects uh, this the valid their validity status so it could be the the reason or the, the or reason why this uh, was valid or not okay so in this case and we can also change the validation message so the message that is being written in the element so all of these properties can be set on the input elements or can be read so i can set a validation message that is the validation error that will be shown and check the validity object that will tell me whether it's valid and if not, what is the reason? So the low level work will be done by the browser of checking the length of the pattern, the date and so on. And the high level uh, value and uh, the high level work will be on you to check the, the, the result of the validity and then decide whether to submit or whether to print other, other error messages and so on. Okay, so uh, in, in many cases, uh, the events uh, uh, will come from forms or from buttons okay uh, from the on click of the button or for the submit of the uh, of the form and uh, uh, if uh, if you are in a regular form where you are inputting some data check the validation rules so that they can save you some work 
or in other cases you just you know you have a button click on this button you add one element to the page you will remove one element from the page and so on like uh, you will be asked to do in in, um, in monday's lab so again the concepts are very simple are all even listener the complexity comes from the combination of all the possible events that you can, uh, can that you can uh, use and all the possible attributes of the dom nodes uh, that you can also modify and read and, and, and that's where the complexity arises huh? but the mechanism is quite uh, it's quite simple uh, to answer the question from yourself uh, sqlite is not available in the browser we don't want it to be available in the browser because the browser doesn't ac have access to the file system okay so it's not there uh, what we will learn to do but it will take at least um, four weeks uh, is to have a server with data in the database and a client uh, the front end that will query the server through the http protocol for uh, storing or reading the data from the database so the database will be always on the server side and on the client side we only have the dom and if we want some local storage but not uh, uh, not the real database as we want Okay, so let me uh, publish this exercise later on in the in the GitHub on the week four example, so that we have, we may have seen this example. I will polish them a, a little bit so that we have also some examples for, for the lab. Uh, as I mentioned, I will also publish uh, later a, a, a short video on the this object that we, will be useful later on after Easter. So it's nothing so urgent. You need to write to read uh, to to view the uh, the video before monday no it's for for much later uh, it's just theory uh, about how this keyword works in javascript and um, and uh, i think that's, that's all for for today and uh, you, will, you will try to play and learn better these things uh, on monday during the lab uh, where you will try will give life uh, to the to the task list that you up to now you developed in, in html we will uh, implement uh, some filtering uh, actions uh, just for modifying the page yeah. dynamically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks for listening and sorry for being a couple of minutes late as always. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, have a good Easter vacation because uh, we won't uh, see until after that. Mm -hmm. So bye bye, thank you. <laughs>